Hello and welcome back to another video. Today and tomorrow I'm going to be doing a 24 hour photography challenge. Uh, so that basically consists of me taking photos or using a camera trap to take pictures for 24 hours. Uh, during the night I'll be using my uh, tour guard camera trap. I'll, there'll be a review on my YouTube, can on my YouTube coming soon and uh, in the morning and during most of the day until 5 o'clock I'll be using my Tamron 150 to 600 G2 lens with my Canon 7D on it. It is the morning. Uh, you can probably tell that by my eyes because they're a bit puffy, but uh, I slept quite well. But it's time to get up. So, uh, I probably woke up for about 10 minutes ago, so I woke up about 5 o'clock. And I've got my camera set up. Uh, everything is looking really nice out there, the conditions are looking quite good. Cloud cover for some, uh, it's a bit of cloud cover, so there's a bit of contrast in there. And yeah, so it's going to be hopefully a really good day if the buzzer shows up. my camping chair just alongside me here. Just there. So uh, when well when uh, I'm not a bit warmer I'll go and hop into that in my sleeping bag and uh, we'll be able to we'll be able to get some pictures then hopefully so uh, okay I am set up, but the conditions aren't quite right for photography at the moment. Uh, the sun still hasn't fully risen. I'm just going to quickly check the weather because um, I checked it yesterday and uh, it looked okay. So there's a slight problem. It's pretty much... It's pretty much cloudy all day. So, uh, that isn't the best. But in my last video where I photographed the buzzers, he came out when there's clouds, so you know. You never know. So I've got my uh, hot cocoa that I made last night, and uh, surprisingly it's still still warm. Uh, so nothing's happened so far. The closest we've come to a bird landing was a uh, a very low pass by a crow over the carcasses, uh, probably like four feet off the off the ground. But yeah, that's uh, that's all we've really had. So absolutely nothing has, is happening. But it's literally just stopped raining. It was uh, it wasn't tipping it down, but it was uh, it was quite loud on this roof here, and it's still uh, it's still spitting now. And I've fallen asleep a few times, but uh, I didn't miss anything. I don't think.
So he's not on the bait pile, but he is uh, he is just walking around uh, just at the top of this bottom field. So hopefully he'll wander down here and uh, have a munch. But I'm actually going to run through my uh, my settings at the moment. Obviously, I am shooting raw. Uh, that's pretty much the only setting I do shoot in. Uh, let's have a look. Shooting raw. Uh, 18 megapixels, which isn't as much as other cameras, but I mean, for this camera, it's absolutely fine. So f6.3, uh, so that's my aperture. My light bar, so I'm actually shooting on AV mode. Uh, but my light bar is correctly exposed. Normally I shoot two stops down or one stop down, but because of the conditions I'm shooting, correctly exposed. And it's also giving it a really nice look to the log as well. Not shiny, but like a, also a glowing effect. Uh, obviously, old servo just because the autofocus is quicker ISO uh, my ISO is actually quite high actually uh, my ISO is on uh, 2000 so it's quite high I might have to bring that down a little bit it's now on 1600 uh, and my shutter speed is at 1000 so that's pretty good if I want to capture any motion and movement. I'll probably rank down the ISO a little bit so the shutter speed can go on probably like 600. That's what I'm going to do now actually. Yeah, bring that ISO all the way down to 1000. Yeah, perfect. So settings are now uh, 640th of a second shutter speed, f6.3 aperture, ISO 1000 and light bar correctly exposed so that's pretty much my perfect settings right there uh, but as I mentioned before I do tend to shoot on stop down okay so uh, I just heard a noise and uh, I think there's a fox I've seen them before walking the edge of this of the wood which this uh, this hide is based around and I think he's coming behind me he probably won't go to the uh, to the bait there because it probably smells of human and uh, the foxes around us are hunted quite heavily unfortunately which is really really sad I don't agree with that but uh, they're hunted quite heavily because they they kill chickens and they kill baby sheep, uh, little lambs, but yeah, so they're probably quite skittish of me. And if they smell a human, they'll probably run away, so uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he went. It's very, very hard to uh, stay motivated and to keep your uh, morale up when you haven't seen anything. Uh, but that's photography. Uh, and I mean, if you haven't seen anything for two days, when you do eventually see something, you treasure the moment twice as like 
you, you treasure it twice as much as uh, as you would if you had seen it every time. Uh, yesterday I actually I did the same video, but I saw nothing. But you know, I think I think it's good to include these things in your in my YouTube because it shows how wildlife photography, even if you put so much dedication and like, time into it, it just shows how unpredictable wildlife is, and it shows that even though you've put so much preparation in, into in, to something it doesn't mean you're going to get the, the pictures you want but there's still three hours to go still three hours of potential uh, of potentially seeing the buzzard or any other animal that wants to come and have something to eat unfortunately i still have seen nothing uh, but i think i think this is a good lesson to everyone who's watching and to me as well uh, that wildlife photography isn't all about just getting out there and taking photos of whatever you want because half the time I mean I've, I've made so many I've taken my vlogging camera with me so many times and tried to make a really cool like documentary so many times that's probably why well that's part of the reason why I haven't uploaded for a month is because I've been out there but I just haven't been able to find any wildlife to photograph you guys uh, and that's a lesson for me and maybe a lesson for anyone else who is starting a lot of photography you, do, you, you can't just go out there and expect to find some stuff unless you go into like a deer park or something uh, it's nature's always on its own terms it's not on yours and I think that's something that all wildlife photographers should uh, remember uh, yeah we shouldn't be the ones that like make the animals come to us, the animals should come to us on their own terms. So I think that's uh, important to get out there. So the main message that I wanted to get behind this video was wildlife photography takes determination uh, and perseverance. Uh, I myself am sometimes quite impatient, uh, but it's something that anyone c can work on and uh, it's something that you can get better at. Uh, this has been quite a strange video to make just because it's got no wildlife in, which is uh, what I'm used to. The, the footage that you're seeing at the moment is just some drone footage. Uh, there's going to be a review on that in my next video, hopefully. I did do something with the carcasses. In fact, I'll show these videos after I've finished this voiceover. But basically, I put them out with my trail camera watching them and uh, a few foxes came over and enjoyed the meal. So, uh, yeah. Those didn't just go to waste, uh, they did go back to nature. So I'm going to sign off now and leave you with the clips of the foxes, so uh, please remember to like and subscribe if you've come this far. Stay tuned for uh, up and coming content by clicking the bell notification right next to the subscribe button once you've clicked it. So I'll see you guys next time.